The year is 2021, the month March. And here at Danville High School, and in the Danville area, students are preparing to return to school. It's been nearly a year since any of these students have been in the school. Oh, there have been a few, but many more will soon be returning. Come on a journey with me as we talk about what it's going to look like as you return to school. Our first stop will be at the middle doors as students are entering the building. Notice as these eager students approach, they come upon a staff member. The staff member is called a nurse. This particular nurse is taking temperatures and asking questions while helping these students to keep a proper social distance. She does this because she cares about her students and simply wants them to be safe while they're in the building, enjoying their education. At a different door, there's another staff member. This staff member is called a dean. Notice the students approaching the dean. There's a tentative nature to the way that they approach the dean. They're curious. The dean simply has questions, though, that she needs to ask. These questions must be answered honestly by the students for the safety of all. The student has answered the questions the way they needed to be answered and has taken the next step to get her temperature checked. This is an automatic temperature station. It beeps when they go through. If the student is running a temperature, a different response will happen and the student will need to step away just to be reassessed by the loving staff members. Back at the middle doors, that same dean is taking another shift. We see her again here asking those questions of these students. Students are entering the building, answering the questions, trying as much as possible to be cooperative and share exactly what they know as the dean simply seeks to assess their health before they enter the building. Have you been diagnosed with COVID-19 and not yet cleared? No. Nope. Do you have a fever? No. Nope. New cough? Difficulty breathing? No. Nope. Muscle or body aches? No. Nope. New loss of taste or smell? No. Nope. Sore throat? No. Nope. Congestion? No. Nope. Vomiting? No. Nope. Diarrhea? So glad you're here. Come on in. Let's take a closer look at one of the automatic temperature stations. Notice the student steps up and it reads their temperature automatically. Student by student, they step forward following the custom that is now laid out before them. In our next step along a student's journey, we will look at how these students have learned how to navigate the hallways. Notice there are now signs on the hallway floors that they can follow, arrows and social distancing reminders. Observe these students as they're heading down the hallway, following the guides that have been laid out for them. Scientists have wondered for years how students tend to move in groups. Some have thought it was like a herd or a pack, but recent studies have shown that it's more like a school of fish or a flock of seagulls. These particular students have managed to maintain their proper social distance and move in unison down the hallway, headed towards their next class. Near confusing intersections, staff members may stand to help students know which way they ought to go. Notice the staff member politely helping these children head the correct direction. These children look like they might have been confused if it hadn't been for the staff member to tell them to follow the arrows so they can get safely where they need to go next. Stairways can also be confusing places, but we've attempted to try to follow typical guidelines that we experience in other places, stay to the right, just like in traffic. Right, up, left, down. These students are cooperating quite effectively. Notice their happy demeanors as they head to their next class. Some of these students have made it to one of our designated lunch areas. 
It must have been the time of day and the schedule that told them it was time for their lunch, so they headed to this particular lunch area called the Little Theater. Staff have attempted to make these places safe for them as well. Notice these students coming in, still social distancing, finding their assigned seats so that lunch can be served. Was it the schedule of the day or was it their own stomachs that told them it was time to come in here? We still don't know, but we observe and learn day by day. These students are demonstrating their enjoyment of one another as they sit at their lunch seats, ready to eat. Lunchtime, once it is over, calls for the students to return to class. They get up in an orderly fashion, as staff members have designated beforehand. These students are cooperating so well because they're overjoyed at being back in school, a place that many of them did not enjoy, but they've missed with such longing. They're eager to cooperate in so many ways. Here we have another lunch area. This is the cafeteria. This has always been a favorite place for many students where their natural habitat can be observed adequately by any proper scientist. But notice these students are also cooperating, headed to their seats, properly distanced, ready to eat, but also ready to cooperate with the loving staff members. These kids are ready, not just to eat, but also to learn. As students enter classrooms, they still have a strong desire to greet their teachers. Teachers now have a new custom they've adopted, the elbow bump. Many kids really enjoy the elbow bump. In the classroom, teachers are also adapting to their new environment attempting to teach students that are at home while still teaching the students who are present in their rooms. These students are working at their stations, interacting not only with the teacher that is there with them and the ones around them, but also with the students who have opted to stay at home. Observe the students learning. The teacher continues to teach, doing the best that she can to help those here and those away. But alas, class is over. And after that lunch, it might be time to hit a restroom. During passing periods, there will be staff members located at the restrooms. The number of students are limited to how many can be in a restroom at one time or another. Staff will assist in their friendly way to make sure that there's only a few in at a time. Once you reach capacity, the staff member will politely ask the student to wait until it's their turn. Okay. These are the basics of the interactions that you'll have to have with different teachers while you're here in the building and with other staff members who are here because they care. But before you go, I'd like to take a moment to take you on a quick tour of the building especially for you freshmen. Here we are entering the building. We will enter the, enter the building through the circle drive doors. As we hurry up through the doors, we'll be greeted by staff members. This is the staff entrance to the building. Let's take a quick tour around the first floor. Our first stop as we go through this particular set of doors will be the student services area. There are counselors in here at all times that you can always seek out help from. The next thing that we'll encounter on the right hand side of the hallway is the auditorium. It has several entrances and you can enter through any one of these. In fact you may be in the auditorium right for need or two. These particular steps on the right can go down to the cafeteria or up to the second floor. You'll see several pairs of steps that look just like this. Mr. Wright's office is on the left. He 
he's your administrator if you're a freshman. Here we have a restroom for boys on the right and several other freshman classes that you'll find. on the first floor we're going to pass another way that you can get down to the cafeteria this is the most common entrance for all students to go to the cafeteria again you can buy all that's where you head let's continue down this hallway this is one of our one-way hallways that was always a one-way hallway even before we established other one ways that you needed to take PE, you'll be headed down these stairs at least each time that you have a PE class to get to your locker rooms. Boys locker rooms are to the right and girls locker rooms are to the left. At the top of these stairs, again, the gymnasium is straight ahead. If I were to go up these stairs another level, it's what we call the T section. You may have a class or two up there, and you may have a particular music class up there. But if we go straight down this hallway, staying to the right, we'll end up down by the field house. As we hurry down this hall, we'll see that straight ahead is the field house. If we look to the right, this is where you can find the band and orchestra rooms. To the left, JROTC and Driver's Ed. But let's head back up these stairs and show you one more section of the building before we end our tour. We hurry back down this hall. But this time we're going to go down the ramp. As we head down this way, instead of heading back to the main portion of the building, we see another entrance into the building. This particular entrance is called the clock tower. You may have seen the clock tower in our earlier video as students were entering the building. This is one way that students usually enter the building. Let's take a peek out into the clock tower. Notice the temperature station there. If we go down this hall, we have an attendance room, we have the dean's office, we have the cashier's office to the left, all important rooms, wood shop and auto shop to the right, Computer lab to the left. Straight ahead you can get to Mr. Kraft's orchestra room as well. Thank you for watching this tour of the building. We're so glad you're back and we hope you enjoy your time while you're here.